Hey everyone, I thought I would make a quick Soulsborne character creation tip uh, video for you guys. Hopefully it'll help you with past Soulsborne games as well as Elden Ring coming up so that maybe you can make something that isn't an absolute monster uh, like what From Software tries to give us in the face presets. Okay, so first of all, I would suggest if you're okay with it, try to put yourself in the game. As you can see, this is a one-to-one -one perfect representation of myself in a world where Taco Bell doesn't exist. I spend anywhere from two to three hours in character creation with any new Soulsborne game. It's just what I do. It's why I want to put out this video because I have way too much time invested in these character creators. But if you're okay with that and you can put your face into the game, then after you've done so, you never have to make the face again. The bone structure is there. You can save it to favorites and then you don't have to worry about the bone structure again. And any build you do after that, you can then change it up, pick different hairstyles, facial hair, eye color, skin color, scars, tattoos, whatever you want. You could just have fun with it from then on out. Another little immersive aspect I like to consider if you put yourself in the game or some kind of representation of yourself is any other build you make with that bone structure, no matter how crazy you get with the further details uh, that you can just have fun with, at its core, it they are all still some kind of uh, reflection of yourself. It's just a nerdy little bit of immersion that I like to think about. If you really don't want to try to put yourself in the game, then I suggest looking up reference shots of celebrities or literally any human being that you would prefer to try to create because otherwise you might make some kind of classic from software monstrosity because I always hear about people trying to mess with from soft sliders and no matter how hard they try, they can't make anything that looks human. It, you really should have some kind of reference shots and trying to uh, put yourself in the game. You can, look at pictures of yourself or a mirror. You could use a mirror. You could even feel the bone structure of your face. This especially helps with the cheekbones, feeling exactly where the central focal point of them should be. So whatever your choice may be, uh, first thing I would highly suggest starting out would be to uh, remove the, the hair and the facial hair so that you can actually really try to uh, to get the bone structure as accurate as possible. Because otherwise, if you have longer hair or especially like a beard or something, you're not gonna be able to get an accurate representation of what you're going for because it's just gonna be covering it up. And as you can see here, I tend to always opt for the classic 2012 Dark Souls Peeve emo hairstyle. I feel like if I did it any other way, for my first character in any Soulsborne game, uh, my viewers would have my head. To get started in building the face shape, I would highly recommend focusing on the nose and the chin slash jaw area, because that will really help bring the face together and give you a better depiction of what you're going for from the, from the get-go. Just a heads up, From Software likes to hide a lot of the, the nose options in the forehead slash glabella categories. I don't know what it'll be in Elden Ring, but I'm sure it's not gonna just be locked into the nose and nostrils. They, they put them all over the place. So keep an eye out for all the options that you're currently looking to adjust. Now, aside from suggesting that you actually spend time trying to make the face you're going for and devoting as many hours as it may take, Another tip I would give with the sliders in particular is if you find yourself maxing out the sliders to one side or the other, if it's the look you're going for, don't worry too much about that. The main point is trying to get the actual uh, face that you're going for. So if you have to max out a slider, max out the slider. Uh, it'll probably also cause you to max out a different slider, whatever it takes. Now, if you're trying to give your character some larger eyes and you can't quite manage to do it in the the settings available to you from software really likes to uh tie that to the masculine feminine slider uh now this is going to turn into a monster but you can see 
for getting those those nice big anime waifu eyes. Also, my character uh, is about to die from lack of oxygen, but you may have to adjust this slider as well to open up the eyes further than what the actual eye settings allow for. Dark Souls 2 might as well be Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Glabella because it has what feels like 30 different Glabella options and they're not all under the Glabella category. They're just thrown in randomly and it is so difficult to make a character in Dark Souls 2 because you have to you have to mold the glabella, which is like the area between the eyes. I don't know the exact definition, but that's what I gather from, from software's uh, character creators. You have to mold it like you're molding it out of clay because otherwise it's just gonna look weird. Your character's gonna look bizarre. And it is actually, uh, aside from the nose and the jaw, it might be the third focal point to really like make the eyes sit how you want, get the get the slant of the eyebrows correctly. That left eye is looking kind of weird, but <laughs> I don't know how else to fix it. The goddamn Glabella! <laughs> Driving me nuts! Oh God. God, it morphs the entire head. Like FromSoft figure out they, they they figured out what the word glabella meant. And they're like, that's perfect. That's our character creator. Everyone's like, wait, what? It's like, yes. What are you talking about? The glabella? Yes. That doesn't even make sense. It will. You'll see. Glabellas are in as far as from software is concerned. And if you are creating a character in Dark Souls 2, please, please spend extra time on the cheek area because almost all the presets look like they've been stung by bees. Now, after you've made the face that you're going for, you can come to the facial balance option. I tend to leave it for last and I don't try to mess with it too much, but if something is, if you feel like something's slightly off, one of these options may actually help bring it all together, but I would not recommend starting with facial balance. That is like, that is tweaking at the end of everything, uh, if at all. Now, one thing that I've had my viewers say with pretty much every character I've ever made is, Peeve, why do your characters always look so angry or sad or whatever the case may be? I'll tell you this. I don't care if you're making your, your perfect waifu or husbando or whatever you want to call it. I, I, I don't care, but if you make it to where they look like they're taking like a, like a selfie and they have a big smile, congratulations, you've made a psychopath because they are now going through this, this world, mass murdering everyone they come across in the most brutal ways possible with a giant smile on their face. So that is why I try to make it to where my characters never smile or at the very least have a neutral expression because otherwise you are creating <laughs> an absolute psychopath. A very important slider, at least for uh, the characters I make, I would say is the occlusion slider. It's usually in the mouth category. It will help um, adjust the overbite and the underbite and I tend to have a bit of an underbite so it really is necessary to um, to really nail like the the look of the jaw and the mouth area there's also the skin color uh, tab where instead of just going with like a base color you can really tweak things and as someone who doesn't really know like the color wheel and spectrum too well the orange to blue, purple to yellow, red, green. Those are very scary sliders. They are. Uh, and while I haven't adjusted too much on this character, don't be afraid to uh, really mess with it, especially if you're going for like a more, 
Uh, I occasionally will do characters that look like they're uh, that they're more or less dead or undead, wh whichever. Um, and I will try to make it look like a like a corpse blue, as I like to say. Um, and in that case, you really want to mess with these sliders uh, to get the right look. And don't forget to uh, mess with the cosmetics uh, section or whatever it may be called in Elden Ring. We don't know yet. Uh, that's where you can really like darken up the eye area, make your eyes look a bit more tired or fatigued. Because uh, otherwise it might just be too shiny around there and it won't really give any like depth to the to the eyes. Now, while we don't know what Elden Ring is going to allow us to do, uh, in the character creation, it's worth noting that in Dark Souls 3, if you actually have a character that is hollow and you go to Rosaria to edit your character, you can actually edit the character while hollow. And this will allow you to really mess with the, uh, the skin options, the, uh, the skin color options, the cosmetics. And you can really, really make some gross looking creations. Bloodshade character, bit graphic, but I wanted him to look like a rotten fruit that's about to like burst. Like if you were to put your thumb on his cheek, it may just pop. Fair warning though, that if you ever decide to do that with a hollow character in Dark Souls 3, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you never reverse hollow or equip the untrue dark ring because you will look like someone who is definitely going through some sort of phase or just came back from a My Chemical Romance concert. Not sure which, probably both. So with that in mind, just keep an eye out in Elden Ring. If they have anything similar to hollowing, then visiting a... Uh, a place where you can redo your character, assuming they have it like in Dark Souls 3, it might allow for further customization options. I'm really hoping that these tips uh, might encourage more people to spend extra time on their first character in Elden Ring, as well as other Soulsborne games, so that you can really nail the bone structure and then any build you make after that, you can just load them up again, load up that same default face as I like to put it, and really just have fun creating all builds after that. If you devote the time with that first build, promise you that all the characters you make after that are gonna be way easier and way more fun to customize. As soon as you're done getting the character just how you want it, be sure to save it to your favorites so that you never have to make it again. You never have to worry about that bone structure again and you're good to go. It's also worth noting that at least in Dark Souls 3, uh, so possibly Elden Ring, if you just want to make a character, you can actually load up a new game, go through the customization, save it to favorites, and then back out to the main menu and it should still be available for you anytime you go to load up a favorite character. Word of warning in Dark Souls 3, if you select the load favorite option, even if you don't confirm anything, if you just hover over something, uh, or if you've been working on one and your first slot has something in it and you hover over that face, it will override it with that face, even if you don't confirm. Like I'm just hitting, I'm just hitting circle to back out and it still loaded the face, even though I didn't tell it to. So it will override it. So make sure you save to favorites before before touching load favorite or the similar face option. Now that said, the similar face option can actually be kind of useful if you're just looking for something uh, that's slightly different than what you've created. Make sure you save to favorites before you touch this option at all. But using it, you can get some pretty good options there. Just know that as soon as you click on it, it's whatever you have is being overwritten with a similar face no matter what you do even if you back out and if you want yes you can create monsters like in dark souls one by just mashing it perfect 
see if I could get a similar face. Okay, yeah. No, that that's that's exactly what I wanted. Yep. Yep, that's the one. That's the winner right there. I really wanted to make this video because I know way too many people in the Souls community who will they'll start a new build or their first character or whatever and they are so intimidated by the character creation that they'll just select the preset, maybe do a few little tweaks to where, you know, it's slightly different. And then they'll just call it good. They'll start the game and they'll just wear a helmet for the rest of the game. And that's fine. You can do that. But you're just really missing out on the potential of having uh, different characters or even just the one character that just has this really like unique look that you've handcrafted for it. In terms of fashion souls, the most customization you can do for your character is your character's face. And to just completely ignore that and just toss it to the side is just such a shame. So hopefully this has encouraged you to uh, really give it a try, especially in Elden Ring promise you if you just put the time in and you get it as close to what you're going for then um you'll be really proud of the result just a reminder that while my youtube uploads may be spotty i'm trimming almost daily on twitch.tv slash peeve if you want the most reliable way to know when i'm going live you can opt into live alerts on the discord server to do that just go to discord.gg slash peeve please make sure that your dms are open in advance so you can quickly prove you're not a bot and then you should go to the rules and roles channel, click the little bell icon, and that will opt you in to live alerts and you'll get a discord ping anytime I go live. Look forward to seeing you there.